Aeronautics and space have been one of Deborah Muller's passions from her childhood days. The sky is my passion and I want to push the boundaries of sky and space to their limits. Now I'd like to discover space. Today, from her glider's pilot seat high over the shores of the Lake of Geneva, she can see the technical college where she's fulfilling another dream, building a real satellite. At the space center of Lausanne's Technology Institute, Deborah is one of a group of 20 students who are in the final stages of testing SwissCube, the first spacecraft to be entirely Swiss-made. An essential aspect of a CubeSat is that it's a small cube, only 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. Another is that it can weigh no more than a kilogram. SwissCube is a Pico satellite in the CubeSat family an international standard to facilitate their construction at minimal cost, notably by educational institutions. Over the last 10 years, there have been some 80 projects like this one, and a few dozen CubeSats have already been launched. It's by doing this kind of work that students will learn all the phases in developing a normal satellite, as we stick to the standards used by the European Space Agency and by NASA. We want students to be able to build, launch and control the satellite in space. SwissCube's objective is to observe the air glow, a luminosity blanket in the atmosphere at around 100 kilometers altitude, caused by the dissociation and recombination of oxygen atoms. The phenomenon is seen by astronauts in the night sky. Although it is smaller and simpler than spacecraft produced by ESA or NASA, SwissCube and its science payload have been built to the highest professional standards. The most impressive part, I think, is the camera that will image the air glow. It's a real challenge to fit such a camera inside such a small box, alongside all the other components. Another challenge has been the conception, the size and positioning of the antennae, which will spring open once in orbit. The part that caused me the most difficulty was the rescaling and positioning of the antennae. You have to put them in one place, do a simulation, go through the results, and then put them in another position, and then start again. It's long, and errors keep cropping up. The Swiss Cube project began about 18 months ago, under the guidance of a teacher who herself has worked 12 years at NASA. The educational impact on the team has astounded her. It's been a miracle watching the students evolve. Not all of them have had lessons in space science. It's amazing how they have matured. They've taken on big responsibilities and shown a lot of initiative. They've really been transformed by this project. The satellite could be launched along with several other CubeSats on the first flight of ESA's new Vega launcher. SwissCube has also attracted several partners and sponsors. Industry thinks very highly of our project and wants to help us. In a way, the students become experts in this field after completing what is essentially a real space mission, and for industry, they become very capable future employees. Deborah Muller is also convinced that her Swiss Cube experience will be opening many doors. I can build on the knowledge that I've gained in this particular project, plus my wider aerospace knowledge. The teamwork aspect has been valuable, and what I like is to show other young people interested in space that it's possible to get into for both boys and girls. Reaching for the stars, then, is not just a cliché. For Deborah and her friends in Lausanne, it's become a real possibility.